Good evening, good evening for all of those who have come into house. We've got some very special guests today. This is a first shot here, um, so hopefully it all goes well. If anybody hears an echo, please let me know. We do have a slight echo on our side, uh, and I don't see any reason why we should, but if anybody has anything like that, before we hop into the actual show at hand, for those in Patreon, there is a new video up. Everything has been uh, responded to. Anybody has anything on the community tab? I did post some further questions and I asked for a couple more photos. Uh, for YouTube wise, I've got a real good video coming out tomorrow that would have been up yesterday um, from there. Uh, what we're doing tonight, I've got five very special guests, all seasoned uh, resellers here as well. People that I've chatted with back and forth for quite some time. Some of them several years or more like Annie, for example. We're going to just go around. It's what would be called a round table in corporate America, a brainstorming session. Um, this is basically throwing back ideas, going around the room, and around circle, basically. Everybody just kind of gives their, their take on it. Everybody can take notes while you're doing this. A lot of times these sessions will give you many different ideas on, on things that you may have never thought of or, or going in directions you may not have thought of as well. So... Nothing's been scripted. Everybody has not seen any questions. I've got a basic list of questions, something you would see at any honest corporate basically meeting or anything like that. So without further ado, I'm going to bring everybody on. I'm going to have them introduce themselves before we hit the questions, and we're just going to follow the same order as we go along about this here. So if I hit the right button, we should be good here. Uh, there we go. We're going to let Travis, the first one, if he'd like to introduce himself, and we'll follow around in the circle as we talked about before we started here. Uh, hey, thanks, Don. Uh, hey, everyone. My name's Travis Griffin. Uh, I've been reselling for about a year and a half now uh, with my wife, and uh, I don't have a YouTube channel, but I do watch a lot of YouTube, uh, more so than any kind of regular entertainment these days, so... I feel like I know a lot of you already, and I'm looking forward to hearing what all these other folk have to say. Hang on here. Okay, there we go. Go ahead, Marty. Yeah, thanks, Don. Great to be here. Thanks so much for having everybody. My name is Marty. I'm full-time reseller about three years now. I've been dabbling in eBay since inception, but never really took it very seriously until about two, three years ago, where uh, my wife helps out, but she's not on our YouTube channel. We have a YouTube channel. We just started about a year ago hoping to grow that eventually, but um, really just here to learn and have a great conversation with these folks. I know these are all, all stars here. You know? Hang on, we're still getting an echo here, not to interrupt. Let me check one more thing. Make sure it's turned off. Yeah, I don't see anything else why there would be an echo. Pardon us, folks, for just a second here. Yeah, I don't see any. Do we still have an echo out there, folks? Hang on just a second. It's still a loud echo. Boy. Maybe if just I get the headphones out, everybody else might not have to. Let's give that a shot here. Why don't you... Uh, did... I still hear an echo. Still hear an echo? Marty is, Marty is too, too low. low. And I don't hear an echo. I hear you fine. Who is that? Who is that? Marty? That was Marty. Marty. Yeah. Boy, this Boy, is this troublesome. Is troublesome. <laughs> Only on Dodson. And Annie's, Annie's got, headphones got headphones on. on. Test, test, test. test, test. Echo, echo still, still anybody? anybody? Somebody call her out. Marty has, Marty no, has echo. no echo. Still, Still echo. echo. 
That's good. Oh, I shouldn't have any have setting that it just says. It's, it's like there's like a there's delay. delay. Sorry, folks. Sorry, folks. Yeah. We have an echo we have now. An echo now. Darn, that's, oh, the, that's only the only other setting, setting I got. I got. Are you sure you're under the box to do? You've got a big, got a big too. Yeah, this is yeah, bothersome. This is Sorry, folks. Sorry, folks. Play the camera. Yeah, I don't have I don't any have other any setting, setting to do. To do. Marty, do you have any ideas by any chance? Um, you ha do you have everybody on echo cancellation yourself? Because you can kind of override all of our audio if you Where want. Where do I do that? Edit, edit, edit mic settings. Yep. settings. Axel cancellation, cancellation is fine on Dave's. Let's yeah, let's just, just check everybody. Echo cancellation is Jeff. I can't do it to Annie's. She's muted. Echo cancellation on you, it says, wasn't on. Maybe everybody else should mute and see if it still um, has an echo. I don't hear the echo now. Yeah, one of them, Marty's, was the one that wasn't on echo cancellation, at least on my end. So it's And I'm the, and I'm the one that's now? not echoing. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. Hang on. Maybe if I can go back to. It's not echoing anymore. Okay, hang on just a second. Let me go back. Everyone's saying it's better. Yeah, every, YouTube. Everybody have an echo good. now? Everybody's saying good. <laughs> Thanks, Marty. Echo, do we have an echo now? They say don't touch it. No, no echo. we're good. We're good. I'm here. Okay, good. well, that's perfect. There was one. Right. I'll, I'll remember that for next time, I promise. Yep. I'm going to write that mic setting down check. I've never done this before, as I've said before. I'm going to make mistakes. This is new for me, just like everybody else probably on here. So we'll let Marty take back over here now that it looks like we have it fixed. Everything's fine. Do apologize sincerely. Something always seems to happen on these live shows. Again, it's kind of uncontrollable sometimes, but we'll let you finish. I'm sorry, Marty. Oh, no problem at all. Again, thank you for the time and thank you for the opportunity to be on with you. It's, a, it's an honor. And everybody here, it's an all-star cast of, all of uh, resellers. So I'm really looking forward to contributing and learning from everybody. So hi, hopefully I'm loud enough. I heard a couple of uh, comments earlier that I wasn't loud enough, but I can be very loud. Did I, did you tell them what you do on the side too? What I do on the side? Um, yeah, I'm in uh, Beatlemania again, uh, basically a world touring uh, Beatle tribute band. Uh, we do, we play all over the world. We have a gig uh, next week. Springtime and summertime are kind of our hottest seasons, but I portray John Lennon in uh, Beatlemania again. Yep. And that's something I've been doing for like 30 over 35 years oh, i think since like 85 86 so yeah that's a passion of mine very good yeah we'll slide it down to annie hi i'm annie <laughs> um i have been reselling um sort of full-time seriously for about five years but i've been on ebay since the 90s and dabbling and doing antique booths and stuff like that and um, I actually uh, got my degree in art history with a focus on material culture. So I, and that was a billion years ago, you know, before, before eBay, but um, it means that I've always been interested in little old bits of stuff. So this is a great way to channel that into a job. And she's from up in the Boston area, right? <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm actually in Salem. Salem. Areas I've been through, uh, you've got brim fields up in that area. I will talk louder. Sorry, people. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there we go. Everything's fine. Dave? I'm Paper Goy, and I'm one half of the uh, Million Dollar Peddlers. Uh, Mr. Magazine and I have a YouTube channel. We've both been on eBay since, uh, I believe, 1998, I believe it is. 
Uh, he's got, I, I believe our spiel is he's got 13 employees and a giant warehouse and about half a million items listed up on eBay and Amazon. And I've got 40,000 and a day job. Want to slide over to Jeffrey? Hi, I'm Jeff, uh, Jeffrey D. Uh, been doing this for about two or three years now. Uh, it's a part-time job for me. And we have a flower shop and greenhouse uh, that takes up, I don't know, 60 to 70 hours a week. So <laughs> the reselling is uh, is a passion of mine. So uh, ever since I've watched, started watching Dawn, it's just been gung-ho with it. And it probably ticks my wife off a little bit about it. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about this and looking forward to it. Well, well, very good, very good. Uh, kind of weird that you do. We have a friend who has a flower shop too, so it was just kind of. I didn't know you had a flower shop. That's interesting, and you're actually in it, so that's even, yeah. even cooler. There, we're <laughs> going to start with some questions. You've got to meet everybody a little bit. We're going to have everybody answer the same questions as we do. This is usually what a brainstorming is. You're just going to go, and everybody has their own approach to everything. Every store, every business is different, even if they do the exact same things. Everybody runs it differently. Everybody has a different idea. And this is this is honestly the best way in corporate America that I've ever learned stuff from another store or from somebody else. When I was first into foods, this is, this is the best way I was able to comprehend all the little steps and aspects. So we're going to go um, we're going to go right into this. And we're first question is basically everybody can answer to their their own. Don't give away your secrets if there's something that you've got that works great. We're just basic answers the basics of what you do what do you do to get your sales travis what's what's the secret that you find that gets you the best sales for whatever you're selling is there a, a routine a tool a technique or anything along that line the question is going to be the same for everybody so you're welcome to think about it as it goes around uh well first i thought jeffrey's background was like uh cgi so that's that's a pretty <laughs> cool background it looks very yeah, science fiction that's our ceiling <laughs> <laughs> it's a great ceiling um, I guess, Don, to answer your question, the one thing that I feel pretty good at and I've learned just in a year and a half and I know I got a long way to go is that's just kind of understanding what people's perception of value might be. Um, so, you know, when my wife and I are, are sourcing or, you know, I'm watching one of your shows or one of the other folks shows, I get a very I get a very good idea based on, you know, what people are willing to pay. It's always very surprising what someone might pay for something. So that just tells me that, that if you can present an item as valuable, that there is somebody out there that, that might be willing to pay for it. Marty. Interesting. Um, well, sort of along the same lines, when my wife and I, we usually go out together to go sourcing um, estate sales are big for us antique malls, stuff like that. I think a big thing is looking for items that other people might find appealing and interesting as opposed to what we would find appealing and interesting. Don't just look for stuff we like. Look for what, you know, the, the vast majority of folks out there would be interested in and willing to pay pay for. And then following it up with great service. We're always interactive with with our buyers and sending messages and thank yous and anything else you need and follow. I think that's crucial too, to treat it like, you know, that they're a welcome guest in our store. Annie, I'm gonna. We're gonna do a little roundup after everybody talks after this, and I'm just gonna throw a few of the ideas and things that I think everybody should pay attention to as well, too. So, okay. Annie, you want to pop on there with that too? Uh, sure. So I don't have any magic secrets, but I think um, sending out offers as often as possible is as close to a magic secret as you can get with eBay, anyway. Um, I think listing a lot is helpful. Um, you know, the more stuff in my store, the more stuff sells. Um, also, <laughs> like honing in on the weird stuff, um, not just weird as in like, you know, occult or bizarre, but weird as in unusual and really super niche. Like it, it seems like few people would want a thing, then the, those few people who do really want it and will pay. Um, and just, I think I kind of learned this from Don, but just price higher than you think you should and then take offers because you'll be surprised how often people have no idea of the value or the value is completely subjective and they'll pay, you know, your asking price or 
you know, a two thirds of your asking price or something, you know, more than the 1250 you thought it might be worth. So. Yeah. I've heard that one a lot. Dave. Uh, tying back into what Travis and, and Marty there said, um, a friend of mine that's been doing it longer than I have always said that when he's outsourcing, he takes a look at something. And the one thing you want to always ask yourself is why would somebody want to buy this? And as long as you can answer that, then you can sell it. Um, figure out what the hook is on the item and you'll be able to sell it. And tying back into what Annie said there, and I guess I'm not coming up with anything original today whatsoever. <laughs> no, there's everybody, you might do the same things. There's no yeah. right or wrong answer. It's what works for you is what, what's important. Yeah. yeah. Um, tying back into what she said, definitely the listing and what I'm trying very, very hard to do this year is list heavy into niches. And it, it may not necessarily be something that uh, I even know I have a niche in. And I'll give a perfect example. Uh, last week, I wandered into a big collection, what a big, it's about 40, 45 um, Fender guitar catalogs and Fender Frontline magazines. Uh, picked them all up, listed them all, and guess what? Now anybody that's looking for something Fender, they're going to find my item. And so on. So if you can, <laughs> there we go. We'll talk. Yeah. <laughs> so if you can find a large uh, group of the same type of item and you can pick it up at the right price, all of a sudden you can bomb that category and you're going to definitely make sales in it. We'll pop over. Jeff, I don't want to say Jeffrey. Jeff, you prefer, correct? Uh, either. Eat, Jeff, I go by mostly. Jeff, that will, that will be Jeff. I'm sorry. That's all right. Uh, I'd say the biggest thing for me is the keywords in the in the title, uh, getting the people in there first. Uh, of course, you've got the customer service and everything else, but uh, just getting them to your store in the first place, that's, you know, I used to sell pop culture stuff, but I've since I started watching Don, I started to go into the vintage paper stuff. So now I've got to compete against someone like him. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah, no. <laughs> Everybody finds different stuff. There's no but, yeah, yeah, it, it, and but but a lot of the uh, a lot of the stuff that I find is actually you know it, the stuff that you find. Uh, so it you just got to find the unique stuff, get the SEOs going, and uh, get them into your store, and and then take care of them for sure. So let, let's round this up just a little bit here on, on sales wise. Everybody pretty much agrees that it's got to be the right item. And on top of it being the right item, you've got to be able to identify it correctly, whether it's the title or why you're outsourcing it to begin with. If, if it's not rare, unique or or different or doesn't have an eye appeal to you, you don't have to like the item. I think that's the biggest point, too. You just have to be able to identify it and see the value, like with, with Travis talking about it, understand what's, what's the key valuable aspect of this, what's what's good about it. Like Marty, the same thing. Annie, it's, it's basically the same principle. We're all looking for something that's different, that's unique. Dave's talking about niches and stuff. Niches, a niche could be a, a, a category or not even a category. It could be like some little tiny squash area. I sell in a niche that there's maybe 400 to 1200 of them on an eBay at any given time. And that's it. And that little niche, if like Dave buys 40 or, or Jeff buys 40 or Travis or Marty or Annie, anybody buys 40, you know, if there's only 400 of that item up right now, you immediately have 10% of that entire market. May not seem like a lot, but you only need a couple people to fight to buy those items. You know, it, it's it's a winning strategy to me. All of those are good good answers, great great uh, ways to get your sales coming. And it starts at the bottom, it works to the top. You've got to be able to identify them, to keyword them. Every as aspect of that is, is all involved in here, and everybody is pretty much all together is stepped on every single aspect of the the main skills to do it. I'm a offers to watchers guy, and that's where most of our sales come from. The vast majority of everything that I sell is on an offer every time. We've done this, the, the auctions. I still run them on some of our other stores. I always do better on the offers to watchers, running them as a bin, buy it now option. So everybody, great answers on that one. The next one here, this kind of ties to that a little bit here. Um, 
what works what's your number one that works best for you that you'd want to share on that aspect what's the one thing that you can do on a routine basis that usually gets you whether it's you're listing a, a keyword um a specific sourcing spot where, where do you get the most bang for your buck in your time or your money when you're out there if that makes sense to everybody travis will be the first one off the off the plate there you know, um, maybe maybe we should maybe yeah. I'll, I'll Travis. I'll hit you on this one. We'll go back in reverse order, and I'll get Jeffrey. So you're not always the first one to answer. <laughs> Thank God. Way to, <laughs> I just thought about that because Travis is going to be put on the spot like every time if I yeah. do it that way. Let, let's let me just let me just bounce around. We'll hit each person and we'll do them in a. Uh, Marty will be the second one uh, after this one. Okay. Okay. So we'll Travis. We'll go around the same circle, but the okay. next question we'll start with Marty. All right. Thought we were on a dating show or something like that. It's always hard <laughs> being that first guy on the left. Um, man, I think the question was, what What's one thing of of the aspect that that I that I feel is important to my business? Your biggest and bang I, for your buck, whether it's time or, or 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 items or what what gives you the best results? It can be anything. I just okay. it's an overall question on that. Where do you get your best, your happiest day, your your best results from on time, sale, whatever it can be? What's your best, best thing that you get from reselling on, on a specific day? I, I'm going to say, and this is this is no secret at all. And it's very similar to what you just mentioned with uh, occupying uh, a majority of a category. <laughs> um, now, I don't occupy the majority of any categories, um, but I do just like everybody else when I find bulk of a particular item, being able to be efficient with the logistics of getting those listed and presented similar. So if you feel like you have like a market share right there. So the, that doesn't happen all the time um, for me, you know, cause I, I, I don't have the resources as some of the other folk, but um, that's, a, that's a big thing being able to get a whole bunch of the same type of item listed uh, efficiently. It's not easy. It's for anybody, I tell you. Marty? Uh, he just, in the last two words, literally paraphrased what I was going to say. Listing efficiently gives me the best bang for my buck. Like, uh, use the term, Don, an assembly line process. Like, set up a, not a template, but set up a, a basic format for an item you're going to list. In our store, we have a lot of um, vintage print ads, lots, a couple thousand of them. And it's basically the same thing, like you say. You, you change the year, you change Coke to Pepsi, whatever the whatever the picture is, but you just keep pumping them out, and that gives me the best return. Because if I'm able to list 100 or 200 in a day, like Annie said earlier, the best I think the best thing is to feed the machine and just keep listing in your store constantly, and you'll yield results. So if I list 200 items, I'm going to sell more than if I sit there and don't list anything. So the faster I can list, the more efficiently I can list, the better. Annie. Um. Yeah, building on that, sorry, building on that, I think, um, well, I, this is kind of a two-part thing, but um, being able to find things that are many similar for cheap, like the buying in bulk concept mm -hmm. um, is my favorite part of being efficient <laughs> um, in my store. Like if I can find, you know, a huge, huge box of, um, uh, I don't know, like 19th century letters. I mean, that's going to last me years <laughs> and be the gift that keeps giving, you know, especially if it costs like under 50 bucks at an auction or something like that. Um, but by the same token, um, listing same similar things efficiently is a big win. Um, I actually, since they made the big change on postcards in October, um, where there is no longer all those granular categories. There's just two categories, topographical and non-topographical. I've been able to leverage that to use um, Excel a lot more and to um, do my listings with a spreadsheet because I don't have to sit there and look up the stupid category numbers for everything. You CSV uh, file them up? Yeah, and I can... I think like last weekend I might have listed 500 postcards just like in my spare time when I was like kicking around um, by doing Excel. And that's, I mean, I don't think anything's more efficient than that. It's not possible for all types of things by any means, but when you can do it, it's awesome. 
So it, so far we've got three efficiencies. You guys don't have to follow oh, yeah. along with them, but that that is key. So Dave, now it's We're your talking. shot there. I actually think that the biggest efficiency that I find is on the other end of things, and that's in with networking and sourcing. Um, and, and I know Don always talks about having pickers, and I think that's very, very efficient. I don't have to run out and find the stuff. I don't have to you know, make the calls. I don't have to go places. All of a sudden, I get one call from somebody that does a clean out or one call from somebody that gets this, and they've accumulated all the stuff. They've done all the work. Most of the time, they've thrown most of the absolute garbage out of it. Um, they've taken it out, and they load it up in my car. I hand them some money, and I drive home. So I think that's a, a incredibly efficient way to do things on that end of things. It's, it's, we're still on to efficiency here, even though it's a different end now. Jeff, what do you got on that one? I'm going to go totally different. Uh, in my opinion, it's being organized. Uh, that's where I get my biggest bang for my buck right there. Uh, not only on the front end where I'm listing, but also on the back end of where I'm storing everything. Uh, especially when I started out, I had no clue what I was doing. I was just throwing them in bins. I'd throw them on a shelf, whatever. And then I started finding myself spending two, three hours looking for something. <laughs> and I said, that was it. And again, I watched one of Don's videos about his storage <laughs> system. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I took a whole weekend and just started organizing everything. And I got everything done. And it has been, uh, it's, it's been the biggest bang for my buck on everything because it allows me to do everything else. Well, you know, the, the only reason I have that system is because I did exactly what you did when you started. I just threw it in a box. We had hundreds of postcards up before we ever realized, well, how the heck are we going to find them? We never thought we'd be yeah. selling, you know, quantity and stuff. So, yeah, that comes down to efficiency, though, too. I, I, I am organized in most areas. The wife is organized in the areas that I'm not organized in, at least. So organization equals efficiency for the most part too. Again, I've spent two hours looking for something. I spent hours looking for something. And that was the last time I said I would ever let that happen. And that's when I decided I'm going to set it up like I did working in restaurants and retail. And that does work. Again, yeah. it, it's it's efficiency. I don't think I really need to do any roundup on that one because I think we all understand and everybody's got the same gist on it. It doesn't matter where it's at. Organization to me is efficiency because if I'm not organized, I can't be efficient. Um, whether whether everybody else mentioned it or not, if, if you're talking about buying like Annie can do 500 in a weekend by herself, that's those are doable numbers. And I, we do those same same basic numbers too for postcards for sure. But she's organized with it. She can't do that if it's not set up. Even if you're out like Dave, he's organized enough to have everything lined up where it's brought to him. He doesn't have to do all that extra footwork. He doesn't have to organize, hey, who do I call today or what's going to happen? Where am I going to have to go out and source that? Travis, the same basic principle on efficiency on the whole works too. Marty, the same basic thing. Quantity, whether I started out, I couldn't get big quantity. I was, you know, one-offs here, one-offs there, one-offs there, whatever the case may be. It's something that happens over time. So as long as you realize that the efficiency is the best aspect of it, not taking, I don't, I pass up stuff all the time because it would take me a long time to list in the time it takes me to list like one item that I may only make 40 bucks. I can list a hundred items that might make me $400. So efficiency that it comes down to, that's why big businesses does do the same way. Now this one, we're going to Marty this time. So Travis, Travis doesn't have to work. On this one, he, he can get take some time here. Yeah, kicking back, look at him. <laughs> Kick back for a few minutes there. There yeah. you go. He's all set on that one there. Now we we touched on sourcing here. Again, no secrets. You don't have to give out your your honey pot or your your specialty spot. For me, if I wasn't working with pickers, I'm just going to give you this, and it's right on to Marty, and then we're going to go around to Annie, Dave, Jeff, and then back to Travis here. My best sourcing place before I was actually uh, able to get source uh, uh, pickers and stuff for us was flea markets and then auctions. Those are my two number, number two spots, flea markets and auctions. So I always did well at those. And then the third one would actually have been um, antique malls because especially 10 years ago, 10 years ago, I could pick up gold almost at an antique mall almost every time I went. Obviously it's different now, but those are mine. And we'll go right to Marty again, whatever, whatever you feel comfortable saying, I don't want you to give away, Hey, this is where I go and shop at this place on the corner right, right, right. Elm street or something, you know? 
No, definitely not. But um, I, in no particular order, estate sales are probably our number one, even though I said no particular order. But estate sales are our favorite in my area. They're frequent. There's tons to be made. Um, you know, I've heard you talk before, Don, about a lot of people at estate sales can be pushy and all that stuff. We haven't. I mean, that's true to an extent, but thankfully in my area, it's not the case. Like as long as you're online and you're well behaved and, and you get there, they give out numbers nowadays with the, you know, with the virus, yeah, they're giving out numbers and all that stuff. And it's pretty, you know, we have a great time. My wife and I, she's great. She'll dive into piles of stuff and look under buried, you know, pile. It looks like a pile of dirty clothes, but underneath could be a treasure. So like we leave no stone unturned. That's definitely our favorite. We also have a couple of, of pretty good antique malls, but I went to one last weekend and it, it was again, very much like your video, 90% junk, you know, disguised as good stuff. And you really have to weed through. That's the only thing I don't like about the antique malls is that you have to really be on your game to find a couple. And it's, it's worth it if you find one or two, but there's a lot of garbage out there, you know, but estate sales, definitely my number one. Annie. Um, yeah, I, I really like estate sales too. There's some really <laughs> high quality, um, people dying in old houses in New England. Yeah. And, um, you, I mean, you have to know which companies are you underpricing. Know, yeah. Which companies <laughs> will give you a deal and are, you know, you get friendly with them. Um, and which companies are just, you know, they put those stupid price tags on everything that say $15 for like, you know, $2 nothing. Item. Yeah. And uh, I just, I can't even do that. Um, I also like auctions a lot. Um, there's a few that unfortunately are a bit far from me, but I will bother to go to them. Um, if I know they have a lot of things in my wheelhouse. So, uh, yeah, finding places with, things that other people think are trash is the secret <laughs> i think definitely yeah. definitely 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 dave i think i actually am going to approach this a little bit differently i think what you need to do is you need to set up the things that happen uh, annually regularly for example up by me every sunday uh there's a, a flea market every sunday but you know living up in upstate new york they don't have it over the winter time so i know i'm doing that every Sunday. And as soon as they bring the schedule out, I put it down on my calendar. There's a bottle show, which, which is a great place to pick up paper, believe it or not up by me. I, I was... put that down on my calendar. Um, I keep track of the church sales and they tend to have the same church sales around the same time every year. I put that down. They, the library sales, you can go at least locally. If you do a search on library sales online, it'll tell you library sales near you. And they tend to have the same ones around the same time every year. I keep a track of that. Then you've got the things such as the estate sales that are that are one offs because you, you don't know if the estate sales necessarily going to be good or not. Same thing with auctions. So those I kind of fill in the blanks with those. Mm -hmm. You know, if I happen to take a look and there's a great estate sale uh, this coming weekend, then I make sure that I go to it. If there isn't anything then I don't worry about it because I know, you know, hey, the week after that, they always have the big church sale over at St. Rita's or whatever the case happens to be. So that's kind of how I would structure things myself. Very good, very good. Jeff? Uh, I think my biggest thing is the auctions. Uh, I like to go to them, uh, ones that have a lot of stuff, uh, a, a lot of different things, not like niche auctions. You know, if I want to find trains, I don't go to a train auction because the prices are crazy. I go to an auction that also has trains, something like that. Uh, but I like, to, I like to go to an auction – maybe once a month at the most and just binge buy as much as I can. I, you know, I, there's times I've bought two or 3000 items at the auction because it wasn't, nobody else was interested in the stuff and it was stuff I wanted. Uh, so that's, you know, I mean, that's the size of my store right now. I've got like 2,700 items. So for me to buy, for me to buy like 2000 items, you know, I've got plenty to list, you know, uh, down the road, but that's, that's the biggest thing for me is that. And then flea, flea markets. Now we got Travis. He's, he's coming around the tail end here, Travis. You've got a lot of time now to think about this yeah. one here. I like to go to the moon and grab my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> moon rocks are worth um, some money. So you, you never yeah, know. Yeah, they are. Um, no, I actually want to tie back into what uh, paper Goy said. Fantastic 
fantastic tips right there. I, I and it might have been one of his other answers too. I enjoy the state sales. Um, one because I I love the treasure hunt and going out with my wife. We have it's just a blast. It's just an absolute blast on the weekend to do that with her. But two, the networking aspects. Um, I, I saw a, a couple people in the comments who have who say they have you know kind of crummy estate sale folks um, in their neighborhood, but we've had really good success and it's it's just fun building up that relationship. Um, it's not like they call me ahead of time, like, hey, come and pick it or anything like that. It's not like that kind of relationship. But I just love getting out there, especially in the world we live in today, and and actually getting to communicate with other with other humans and developing those relationships. So estate sales for me, um, that's my favorite thing to do. So sorry I copied you all. Except no, there's, there's again, there's nobody's we're all, we've all come to these conclusions based on our own personal experience. We didn't discuss this ahead of time, and everybody's basically saying auctions are on the top of a lot of people's list here. State sales are up there, too. In all honesty, like buying in bulk, a lot of people think, well, you're never going to find it. Now, Jeff right here, he's telling you he's getting thousands of items, and he's got to have them. Everybody here has got to have places at least once in a while where you can get big bulk things. You can't list 500 or something or get 2,700 or something. There's a reason most everybody goes to a, a auctions or estate sales because the stuff is there. And I think Annie said something about you've got to know more than the people you're buying from basically is the whole gist of it. That's that's my take on it. Knowledge is truly power. And I know a lot of people don't don't they think it's just us saying that. But it, it, that's that's what runs my world here is knowing more than somebody else. That's that's the bottom end of the line here. If I know more than somebody else. And I got my stuff set up, again, organized, efficiency in the whole works. I'm going to rule the day. I'm going to win out at the end of the day. I'm going to be the first to the finish line and whatever I happen to be doing. So uh, I, I, I strongly believe in, in the places everybody has said here from their own personal opinions, and that's their own experience. If you don't go to an auction at least once in your life, a big auction, you're missing out because I, I don't know how many times no one else has been bidding on something that I can make a ton of money on. You know, that's just sitting on a table or or anybody who's sat to the end of an auction. If you know what table cleanups are, I bought entire tables of stuff for nothing, almost like five bucks, ten bucks, because I was the only one. It was opening bid and I got the whole thing. Nobody wanted to stick around. Most people, what they'll do is they'll put the high end stuff at the beginning of an auction. I'm just going to ramble for a second here. They'll put the, the high end stuff at the beginning of the auction because everybody's got money in the beginning. Everybody wants this. They usually put the most desirable stuff up first. Every auction I've ever been to has done that. Once in a while, they might let you pull something up and, and get, if somebody's got to leave at a certain point just to get the money in. But at the end of the auctions, when I usually do the best, I'm not the one sitting there competing for the high-end stuff every time. I'll take the, the cheaper, easier list stuff any day of the week, especially when it's in volume. Big, massive quantities of stuff is, is what I look for. So this next one here, we're going to pop to the next one. It's going to be Annie's turn to answer first this time. So we're going to put Annie on the spot here for uh, just a minute here. Um, now, we talked listing techniques came in. That was honestly my next next discussion here. What, have you, what did you do before you went for CSV? Or let me say it this way. Listing techniques is the question here. You can answer however you wish as we get to you on here. But since Annie's kind of already segued into the, this here with the CSV file. Now, what do you do? What's your best technique, though, if you're not listing like to like, like postcards and that? What if you happen to come across a huge collection, let's say, of 100 different action figures from 100 different lines? Is there is there a quick way that you've come up with or is there something that you've got a set pattern for something like that? Again, I'm giving you an example because you already kind of answered part of the question on that one well if i came across a hundred different action figures it would take me about 40 years to list them because i don't know anything about that stuff well but... something in your realm let's put it that way <laughs> something that you would be more, um, more prone to purchase uh, yeah um, different items well i mean i should say like with the csvs i only do them for things like postcards where there's only two pictures or one picture because you have to upload the um images to a remote server like i use aws or amazon whatever it's called amazon you know, thing and um it's and then i have to build a formula in excel to populate the urls for the images and if it gets like if it's um 
a different number of images for each thing, it's too complicated. Like I can't automate it. So the CSV file thing is only good for certain kinds of stuff, um, definitely. So I mean, for, for speeding up listings in general, I've, um, you know, when I started, I used to write these long sort of informative salesy descriptions where I, you know, tell them like all this research I'd done and all this stuff. And now I say something like, you know, vintage ad, thanks. <laughs> or, you know, I, I, it's a little longer than that, but it's, I don't bother with descriptions. I make sure the keywords are tell you everything and the condition is accurate. And then the rest is just cut and paste. I also am a big fan of apps like Text Expander, which is um, it's it's available cross platform, but it's now a subscription model, unlike when I bought it. So I I would look around for other things like that. But basically, you just you create snippets that you can reuse, and like I have ones that say like all my basic condition statements. So I have one, you know, I type three letters like. XGO and it types, it automatically expands to like, you know, good age condition, please see pictures. And I have a bunch of those and I can just cruise through without typing all that stuff or even cutting and pasting. Um, that speeds up my listings. Yeah. So like not really writing descriptions except in rare cases and using text snippets are big things. Um, and also, having a really efficient system for how you get your photos from however you've taken them into your eBay listings. I think that's the slowest part is waiting for them to upload. Like, I don't know if people have better, like, like that whole like um, asymmetric upload download thing where like you might have really fast internet, but it takes forever to upload the images. Um, that's my that's my bottleneck is like sitting there waiting for images to load and you hit list and it's like wait for your images and you're like ah. I think we've all seen that one yeah so yeah very good <laughs> Dave if I got a hundred different magazines uh, one of the things that I would do would be I would kind of sort them out by category because that will save you time when you're listing them right there. Um, and, and that will definitely help you out um, when you've begun listing things over and over and over again. You tend to know what categories things go in. Um, I really don't have to do much searching at all on magazine categories because I've listed so many of them throughout the years. I know this is this kind, this is this kind. I know what the options are. I know where to find them on the drop down if I want to put them into the uh, proper genre or topic and all that sort of thing. So if you sort all your automatic uh, automobile magazines together first, and then you don't have to change that. Um, another thing that I would do having the day job, um, what I'll do is during the day, hey, you just kind of, I've got the Caesar scanner. You just kind of walk by it and you just push the button. You take a picture when you walk by in the day job kind of deal. And um, because the pictures, taking the pictures uh, takes an awful lot of time, as, as Annie was saying. But if I can have all the pictures done first, I find that I can absolutely fly through as opposed to listing, then taking the pictures, listing the next item, taking the pictures. So having those all done first definitely does save you a, a lot of time on that. Um, and then the third thing that I end up doing, oh, uh -oh. <laughs> Don left us. Um, <laughs> the third thing that I end up doing is uh, just because of the way that I do things, I, I uh, put away my items by size. So I, I would list all the digest magazines together, for example, just because those all go in the uh, same type box. So those things I would do to speed things up. All right, Travis, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> I think Jeff, yeah, Jeff. Uh, yeah. I don't know if Don just didn't like Dave's I did not like yeah. Yeah. enough of this crap. Yeah, man. He gave up. You made him quit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mike, uh, I'm Jeff, a, hopefully I'm you're drop. better than him or I'll quit. <laughs> <laughs> my uh, my biggest thing that I do is, is batch everything together. Pretty much the same. If, if I come across something, five or ten items, uh, I'll, I'll put it in a box and, you know, got the box labeled to what it is. And then when I come across more of them later on, you know, until I about 20 items, then I grab them out and I put them in the order and then I'll, I'll list them then. 
but if it's just a couple items, I, I, I try not to uh, list them until I've got a, at least about 20 of them. And that speeds everything up. So, so do you, do you, uh, you just keep them as drafts. You don't set like a, Hey, I want all these listed at a certain time. On well, when when I find stuff, I, I don't even I don't even do that. I'll, I pretty much should do what Don said is, is you know, get the like items and then just uh, pretty much have a template of what you're listing and then just you know finish out the keywords that you need. Uh, I don't know, like uh, match match books. Uh, there's matchbook covers, and it's you know metal tin covers that go over a matchbook. I came across about five or 10 of those. I waited till I found about 20 more of those. And then I start. and then I listed all 20 of them. Did it just me drop off or are we all here? Just you. Here? Yeah, <laughs> you Don? I, I lost total internet in the whole house. Everything went down. Even my regular phone line for like 30 seconds. Oh my goodness. Never happened. Don, in my are life. you in a hostage situation? What's no, the not at all. <laughs> the wife started yelling down and, and everything else. So it looks like we're back on. At least it didn't kill the feed. That was my biggest worry there. Yeah. Sorry about that. Never had that happen before. Well, you missed a couple of hell of an answers, Don. Oh, oh geez, now you tell me that. <laughs> yeah. You have to watch the replay. I will. Yeah. I'll go back and check that out. Yeah. Give yourself a like too when you do it. <laughs> Where are we um, at now? Who? My turn. Yep. Um, all very, very good uh, things, uh, great ways of, of uh, doing your listing. Um, I think the key to kind of doing that efficiently is to get married. Um, that is what has happened to me. I married someone who is very good at taking photos, and not very good at shipping logistics. So she takes just batch photos, uploads them to the Dropbox cloud. And then as time permits, you know, I'll, I'll build my drafts or whatever, and then upload, uh, upload them into the thing and, and get them listed. Um, I will say two weeks in, I wanted to like build some accountability for myself. So we came up with actual goals, which I've seen a million people do. And, and um, it still sounds kind of silly to say, but if you're really trying to do this for real, you need kind of measurable goals to, um, to see how you're performing um, and to give you that motivation. So, yeah, I came up with a goal for myself for this month was to list 60 and I'm like at 80 and that's, that's, that's more than I did last two months combined probably. Uh, so I'm not like a superstar or anything, but I, I just use a little goofy app called tally where I just tally every time I make a new listing and it, and it gives me that little dopamine burst to, uh, <laughs> to make me satisfied in the moment. <laughs> Very, very good. Very good. That's funny. Marty? Um, first, I want to say, Annie, if you haven't done so already, a video on how to do a CSV file and upload would be really cool. Yeah. I think it would benefit I, a lot of people, including me. I don't I've, know if you have already. I haven't. I've been considering it, but it's... Get on it. Get on it. It's right, everybody? Little, yes. It's a little uh, picky, but I'll, I'll try to explain it. Yeah. I, I mean, I've seen... I You know, I think it would be really beneficial for a lot of folks, but... Yeah. um. Yeah. You can As do it for as, Amazon too if you didn't know that too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I would love to do something like that. Um, as far as like, um, if it's a bunch of different items, and this actually raises another question I wanted to post to everybody out there, but because I've heard different people say that eBay doesn't like, like I was explaining earlier, I could bang out like 500 ads literally in a day or two because I use the scanner. It's easy. It's quick. The photos are instantaneous. But then I've heard other people say, well, you shouldn't do. If you have other things to list, like let's say I have 20 albums to list, and I have you know, whatever. It's good to mix it up because if you flood a bunch of listings in one category, the algorithm doesn't like that. I don't know if that's true or not. So I try to, I do try to like mix it up a little bit. I won't sit there and just as tempting as it is and easy as it is to scan. I'll try to take some actual photos of other items. And I would always take photos first. Uh, like Dave said, always do. If I'm going to do 20 pictures, I'm going to have all the pictures ready, loaded up on my computer and then start listing, not bounce back and forth and back and forth because it just wastes time. Efficiency again. We keep coming back to efficiency, but it's it true. always comes down to that. Literally, yeah. what you sell is due to efficiency. Yeah. 
And it sounds like most everybody here. Now, um, with you talking about, I just want to touch on this for a second. With like CSV file, there's a couple ways you can do it. I've done it the exact same way Annie has done it before. In the past, you could upload a CSV file, but you could actually then have to go back in and upload the photos one by one to each listing at one point, and they'd show up, I think, as a template back then. But you'd have a yeah. whole bunch of templates to have to go through. I haven't done it that way in a while here just because – We've got so many people that do it. It would just be impractical for me. But that way works great for Amazon. I do CSV files for Amazon. With the mixing up stuff, I've come to the yeah. conclusion, like Annie's talking about 500 postcards. And this would probably, everybody could, could benefit from this. So I want to bring this up. Postcards, even though they're technically in the same category, the types of people that are looking for each different type of postcard are all different. One person only collects Christmas. One only collects, like, from my hometown, Toledo or Saginaw or wherever it is. So I've, I've come to the conclusion, as long as they're different, even if they're the same type of item, I, I feel from our sales and doing mix-ups and stuff that you can still get just as much leverage doing it that way because you're still spreading yourself out. The postcard category is massive. It's like five other smaller categories combined plus. So I think that gives you a pretty good reach. I do try to, though, to... One day I'll do postcards or, or this or that sometimes. Another day I'll mix it up and might do three or four different types of items. Today they did buttons, postcards, some trade cards. I got some labels in. And the last thing they listed today was posters. So it just depends on what you're doing, of course. But I think just paying attention to the type of category that you can spread out in. Again, postcards, I don't know what, there's millions of postcards up right now. Got to be like 5 million or something. It's some huge number. So, I mean, you're, you're talking about, a bunch of mini categories that used to be there that you still have that same audience for, I guess I should say. But now this is going to segue right off of that. I try to get questions that were similar in, in there. People talk about photoing and this and that. I've got a rule. I'll just throw this out real quick. I'm not going to take long to do. I try to do things that are five photos max or less because again, efficiency, time constraints and things like that. It makes my life easier. So I pass up things, even if there's a little money, just because if it's like clothing, I give up clothing because sometimes for one piece of clothing, I may need 10 individual photos and clothing's murder. I, you miss one little spot at the store, you get home, you're like, oh man, I just wasted my money because there's a hole. And I don't, I don't like to repair anything because you're going to get that one person that you, you repaired it. I don't want it. And they're going to go off on it mm -hmm. for, for the majority. What's your, your favorite means to scan photo or whatever you do. I know some people use a phone. Some people are, I'm, I'm a DSLR. Uh, I, I like the digital cameras for, you know, what's your favorite, your, your best go-to source for imaging, whatever you're doing. Do you have a, a light box? Do you, you set up better lights? Do you do it outside, which is a good option too for those who can't afford it? Don't do it outside window or a window inside, right in front of the window is perfect. But what what's this one's going to go to Dave this time because we hit up Annie last time first. So Dave, what's your go-to source there? Uh, what's your best day for photographing? What do you use the most? What do you like the most, I guess I should say? I would say 99.999% of the time I use the Caesar scanner. Um, I find that works wonderfully. Um, do check it out if you don't have one or don't know what they are. Uh, two quick little tips on those, though. Is that um, like a book scanner? Yeah. Yep. Uh, two quick little tips. It's one, got the built-in tripod and the sliding. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yep, We've yep. got one of those somewhere around here. Um, one problem that I have is I have to be careful if I'm taking pictures in the middle of the morning just because of where my desk is set up at because then the sunlight comes in from outside and that screws it up. And because you take pictures on a, a black mat, if you have something with a lot of black on the cover, for example, then sometimes it wants to crop that out. Um, if you are using a Caesar scanner, you haven't figured it out yet, the secret way around that, stick your hand or arm into it and then crop it out. Um, that'll give you the size that you want. We're going to go to Jeff. Uh, probably a duplex scanner for most of the paper stuff that I do. But uh, after that, I, I, I use my phone a lot, especially for uh, some of the smaller items that I list. But I guess it's an iPhone? Uh, no, no, uh, Android. No, I, I only ask that because I don't own an iPhone. I've taken photos with my phone on very rare occasions, but I'm just curious because I, I a lot of people say you got to have an. I'm not a, I'm not an Apple person at all. I'm not a big fan of Apple, but um, any phone can work. So again, it, there's there's no right or wrong answer for that at all. I'm just curious on what the answers would be. Travis, up to you. 
Uh, so I just want to get something clarified. Dave, were you suggesting we should stick our hands in a heavy piece of machinery? No, no, oh, it's it's not a, have, no, 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 okay. no it's, a, it's a flat mat. You're sticking your hand oh, on top of a flat it, mat. It's just like having a stand. Like I use, I use a cam stand. It's like an arm, but it's a built-in one, one unit thing where the base is connected to the, yours is mounted to the stand, right? Yeah, the top part is mounted to the stand. Yep. And, but yeah, the, yeah, um, yeah. Yep. There, it's it's a there's a bunch of them. I know. I I'm almost sure I know the exact one of what he's talking about here. We have one. I use that for stuff. If you want to do comic books easily, that's one of the better things too. You can set up your own stand though, of course. But they're they're not they're not some huge thing. I know there's some six, seven, a thousand dollar units for book scanners, which I don't think the Caesar cost. It's like no, like you can get two, about two hundred bucks. Yeah. Okay. 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 I'm sorry. Go ahead, Travis. I'm sorry not to interrupt. Yeah. I'm sorry, just a, a question off of that. It, it, is that where uh, where you put the, say you want to take a picture of both pages in a magazine or a book that you would just kind of lay it that way? You lay it open, you lay it open, you lay it up, and then it it's, does the scan down from the top. Oh, okay. Yeah. What, what okay. some what I've got a friend who does that. What he does is he digitizes public domain books. I'm going to give this away. This is something he does for money, and he uses one of those. He's got two or three of those, and he's got people that just sit there and scan books that are in public domain. That's all he does, probably like six hours a day for four days a week. That's all he does. He has people scanning books. He lists them on Amazon for direct download and all that stuff. He does the printable versions as well. It's like three or four bucks a pop when he does them that way. For each one, once one is done, they're all done. He doesn't ever have to do or mess with it again. He's got some application that, you know, fixes it up. It goes right on Amazon. So there are people that do that. Those things are awesome for doing stuff like that, as well as what Dave uh, Dave was talking about here, too. If you ever get a chance, look up one of those on YouTube and look at how easy they are to do stuff like that. Just FYI. I'm sorry again. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I think I did it to myself. Um, yeah, he could do Winnie the Pooh books now, too, I think. Um, the original, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, light. Our, our key is a light box. When when we invested in both a, a big light box and then a small lock light box for like action figures or, or whatever or jewelry, it's made a world of difference. Um, the only thing that sucks is when you know the item might be shiny, and those lights from above you know Glare. just bounce off them. It kind of sucks, but man, it's it's been a it's been a game changer for us. So light box, you can do it anytime you want. It, the, the, does that come with lights with it already, or is that um, is yeah? Like you can built in. You unit? can certainly add lights from different directions, like the ring lights or whatever. If you if you wanted to give a full, but otherwise they're, they're really nice. They're really nice, and you can you can pick one up, pick up a small one, cheap to start with, and just see if it if it's for you. Good option. Very good option. Okay, Marty. Uh, light box if it's not paper. <laughs> with my and I use my phone as a camera it, the, the way that they've come you know they've advanced so much those cameras it's incredible but the light box like Travis said we, we picked ours up about three I'm looking this way because it's over there about three years ago and it was definitely a game changer like the professionalism it just looked incredible compared to just throwing them on a rug or something like yeah, I think yeah, everybody yeah. does initially and then my trusty scanner I have a couple of scanners I have a Epson ES400 over here which is for like eight and a half by 11 is the max. And we have a really big flatbed scanner. Which, 18 incher. Yeah. Which I've we could fit like an entire life magazine just for reference, which is a pretty big magazine. You can, you can, if you put it sideways, you can almost fit the whole thing. So that thing's a godsend too. We use that a lot. What'd so scanners. Are the, what's that? What'd that one set you back? Uh, Maybe like 400 bucks. That was pretty expensive. That was about a year That's, or two ago, but it's paid for itself. More. Yeah. There Did were you really? Yeah, Yo, oh, absolutely. I've got a, I got a, I've got a um, one for art, so it's a specialty okay. one for printing industry. Yep. So that's really it. The scan is for paper and uh, phone and light box for virtually everything else. So phone is perfectly fine for, for everybody, yeah. as you can see. So, yeah. Annie? Um, don't have a ton new to mm -hmm. add, but I use, like, the, the holy trinity of the duplex self-feeding scanner and the flat scanner that you can uh, shine light through objects and a light box with a camera and or a, an iPhone for pictures. Um, I think that what's like using a, a light box and um, either a tripod or sticking your camera in the on the top so it, sh it shoots straight down and using some kind of remote is a great um, way to keep it going fast and not have to like, you know, like reset up every shot. Um, 
I have a little cheapo remote for my for my iPhone that is great for that, and I have um, I have a couple of DSL. Well, I have a DSLR and a uh, a Fuji mirrorless camera that is actually probably nicer than my DSLR, which. <laughs> yeah, it depends like, on the model, of course. Yes. Yeah, I mean they're both like sort of prosumer. Like I, I, I used to be an exhibiting photographer in the analog days, so I, I have pretty good cameras. But honestly, um, phones are so good now. It's, it's almost like it's so easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't see them. My fingers are too big, so I, I'm, I'm terrible. If, you, if anybody's ever got a text for me, they'll know because my, my texts are just terrible. I hate spell check too. So anyway, very good on that one. Uh, Dave, or did I already hit you there? I've, I've lost track for a second here. It's you, right? Right, right. There we go. No, I did the Caesar first. Okay, so I've, I've, I'm have i off track here, too. So I was actually looking ahead to the next one here. This I next think you one, got a super chat there, Don. Do I? Yeah. I'm sorry, my vision. Mike, Mike Radio Parts gave you five. Well, thank you very kind. How do I? I guess I just missed it, I think. I'm very sorry about that. Thank you. Super, super kind. There it is. Hey Mike, These Mike. Were hey. Too good. I see Mike out there. Thank you very kindly for the super chat, Mike. Hopefully I didn't miss anything else. I get into my little groove here and I totally sidetrack everything else, it seems, some days. This next one here was was something that I always try to ask everybody, and I want everybody who who's listening out there to pay attention to these answers here. It doesn't matter if you're part-time or not. Like Jeff is doing part-time, but he's working a massive amount of hours and he's still getting some hours in here on reselling. So time isn't, isn't the factor. I think we're actually to Jeff first time this time. So this is going to be an easy one. You've already answered part of it, Jeff here. How many hours do you put in, in general, in reselling? I, if it's part-time, again, that that's perfectly fine. You can, again, re, uh, equate how many hours you put into your full-time job to give people a, a, a general idea of how many hours a week in general work you are doing. People think this is easy. You can do it with no no amount of effort, and it's it's little work. But I find that opposite. We're going to let Jeff take over that one there and, and give us a uh, just a rough breakdown and time investment on, on a weekly basis. Now, I with our shop, I I do. I think my average is about seventy three hours a week, and uh, in the springtime it's a lot more. But uh, I'd say I'm being part time. I probably put close to forty hours a week into it easy and i don't watch tv i don't uh i don't go out i don't you know my my fun you know when i go home at night i i list stuff or or i work i go out to my my shed where i've got all my listings you know and i'll work on that or something but i'm always you know that's my fun sound like dom too dom does the same thing <laughs> but yeah i i probably do close to 40 hours easy but that's part time for me, I guess. A lot of hours, a <laughs> lot of hours. Yeah. To run a business in general, I'm just going to throw this out here and then we're going to pass it off to Travis and go around the circle here. But I mean, I probably easily do 70 plus just on reselling. And then I do other stuff, of course. That's not counting videos. That's not counting our art business, my, my toy things that are going out right now. That's not counting us three in the morning boxing up stuff for another line of stuff that we're doing that, you know, so... It all takes time is the biggest thing. Don't ever let anybody tell you this is going to be easy and quick. You, you, I love it, though. I'd rather do this. I'd rather put in more hours doing this than working for somebody else for less hours. I'm going to make more, and it's all my game. So that's my yes. take. On it. We'll go right off to Travis so so, so Travis can throw his, his point of view in, in hours on there if he wishes to. You can say no if you don't want to give out hours. I'm not trying to force anybody, anybody else out there. So um, No, it's, it's fine. Um, uh, yeah, this is part-time for me as well. And I, and I guess the hours weekly probably fluctuate on how many, you know, million dollar peddler shows I've still got to watch that day. So if I'm including those, we're, we're, we're definitely at 25 to 30 hours a week for sure. Part time, too. So you're working -time. a full time job on top of it. Yeah. So you're anybody doing this, no matter what, even if it's part time, full time, you're doing almost full time hours, even as a part time seller in my book, if you want to be good, if you want to grow, if you want to advance your business. So we'll go off to Marty there. Um, it's full time for me. So easily 12 hours a day, whatever that equates to times seven. I think Annie has a spreadsheet for that. I think it's 84, right? <laughs> 84. 
Yeah. But anyway, uh, but it's hard to quantify really because it's it's the vast majority of every waking hour of my life recently, you know. And it's because, like you said, Don, it's something I genuinely love to do. So whether it's you know the, there's so many aspects, sourcing to listening to researching the items to now I'm trying to dabble in YouTube, which is a time suck for sure. Um, watching you, watching Million Dollar Peddlers, watching Annie, which I do a lot. Um, it's it's at least twelve hours a day. It's every waking hour. I'm, I'm doing something, you know involving um reselling and i love it i wouldn't have it any other way i spent 30 years on wall street and i hated every minute of it i i, so I, I feel free you at there. last free at last yeah <laughs> annie um i actually despite my apparent reputation i'm not a math person and have no idea how many hours i work <laughs> um <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> um i will say that I spend the most time on eBay because it is the most labor intensive job I do. But I also, you know, I have an Etsy store. I have a Shopify store. I do some other stuff that I'm hoping will be in person when it is safe to leave the house again. Um, you know, maybe in the spring or summer. And uh, I, uh, I don't know, during the pandemic, it's, I, I, you know, I used to like have a life and go see bands and movies and friends and things. And I don't really do that anymore. So I think I do work quite a lot, but I have no idea how many hours that is. <laughs> but does it, let, let me ask you this then. Let, let's, let's go at this a different direction. Does it feel like work? Not really. And that's the thing. I mean, so, I mean, I'm kind of a corporate refugee as well. I used to, um, I mean, I started my career as a designer, graphic designer, and, um, you know, did a lot of design and web development and branding and all this stuff. And I worked with a lot of very corporate people for many, many years. And I, I did end up owning a uh, branding firm and it was very fancy and really stressful. And I had to, you know, write proposals and jump through hoops and it was I, I kind of hated it after a while and I burnt out and that's why I started reselling. So it, it doesn't feel like work. That was my refuge from work. So that's like, it's my fun job. And I, I do a little design on the side cause it pays well, but um, <laughs> I love that it's on the side because that's interesting. Yeah. Corporate corporate. Yeah. I worked in, in a oh. corporate office before myself. It's, it's a, blood-sucking, never-ending job, I guess, with no way out, it seems, no matter what position you are, unless, yeah. well, even if you run the company, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I was I was the boss at one point, and I still was like, the clients were the problem. <laughs> so, yeah, it's always something. I hear you, I hear you. Demanding, demand, I guess, is the biggest part. Dave, now, now I know you do a full-time job, too. You know, you guys are all talking about the corporate world. That sounds like a uh, picnic compared to the state world. Try dealing with state supervisors. <laughs> and Andy there was talking about the clients being the problem. I love the clients. It's the nonsense that comes from above in the state. That's yeah. uh, that's annoying. Um, so I've got what you say, hours. Dave. They might be listening. <laughs> they can listen all they want. I, they can't fire me. <laughs> I do the 40 hours a week with the uh, state job, and then I do about 45 to 50 with the uh, online selling. And would I... Two and a half years or two and a two and a quarter years, I'm done with the state job, and I'm looking forward to being able to dedicate those forty hours to the reselling, because well, it really is not much of a job excellent. compared to the state. Let me ask you something, which I probably already know the answer, and I'm going to come back to Jeff and ask Travis the same question in just a second here. Which job do you like the best? Oh, reselling without a doubt. Well, I, I kind doubt. of figured. That. <laughs> Jeff. Jeff. Uh, oh, definitely reselling. I mean, I wouldn't, you know, it's fun though. Is it not? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, I mean, that, that's what drew me to it in the first place is, was it's, it's fun. So, uh, I love, I love what I do, but the reselling is a lot more fun. <laughs> no headaches. Well, not as many headaches, I should say. I think yeah. that's the biggest thing. Yeah. What about you, Travis? Which, which is your favorite? Um, well, I, I have my uh, current position on uh, my LinkedIn profile, so I'm just going to say I love my real job. 
<laughs> okay, <laughs> I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. I didn't want to put anybody in the spot. I should have watched that one a little bit more carefully there. Link twice if you really mean that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let me now. This one's one that I've I ask myself constantly, and this is something that I think if you don't ask this question to yourself on a routine basis, you're never going to get better. What's your biggest weakness that you know you have to work on? I've got a bunch of them. I know I I, I ramble a lot. That's one. If I had to judge on on videos, I ramp. I talked about with this Dave. I do ramble a lot. I, I can't help it. I get into my little groove, and I'm I got blinders on, I guess, but. I've got issues with eBay. I'm going to tell you mine. Mine's my biggest problem is still photos. I still have, if I have to take a photo, I, I, I don't, I'm not a big, great photo uh, photographer. I love the scanners. I love the stuff, the scanners and stuff, but I need to improve our photos still, even with booths and lights and all that stuff. But uh, uh, Travis, it's back to you now. I think Jeff answered the first one last time. Did I, am I, am I not correct? Yeah. Travis, it should be right. Yes. So sure, Travis, absolutely. you you get you're on the spot now on that one there. What do you what do you need to improve the most on? And and if you don't want to answer anybody, I don't want to put anybody on the spot. But everybody makes mistakes. Everybody needs improvement somewhere for sure. I have never seen a store that was perfect in every little spot. Everybody needs something, including me, myself, and I. So, um, you know, the easy answer would be you know get through that death pile. But I think the death pile is just a you know, a component of the true issue. And the true issue is like, uh, I love sourcing and, you know, that, that reward system that gets triggered in the brain when you're sourcing is, and you're seeing all these uh, imaginary dollars show up in your brain <laughs> as you're picking it up. That's, that's about as gravy as it gets, but then you get home and you process it into your, you know, so you can track it. And then it sits there in a pile for, days and hours and weeks. And uh, so that motivation um, is is lost. I would like to figure out the super powered method to take that same dopamine at the beginning and make listing and processing just as uh, psychological rewarding. Um, so I could I could do with that somehow. I gotcha. I gotcha. Marty. <laughs> You look a little um, bit. Um, no, well, there's so many. If you're honest, there's so many different things. Obviously, right? I'm sure everybody wants to improve on a bunch of stuff, but um, I'm not going to say death pile either. But coming back, back from back, estate, back, back. right back stock, coming back from an estate sale, riding high, like Travis said, the dopamine going and all that stuff. But we can make a fortune and look at this and look at this. Um, once I get it home, it's not for me personally. It's not a problem uh, getting it up and processed. It's a problem of like finding the room within the confines of my work area where I could put all this new stuff, like box loads of stuff. And again, getting back to that whole efficiency thing, you know, if I don't get to every single item that first couple of days enlisted, it's going to ultimately wind up in some pile and not get, and not get filed away accordingly. And then, I, you know, I, you almost forget about it after time, because if you don't see that um, flurry of activity right away that you hope to get on the new stuff, um, it becomes, you know, you move Depressing. on to the next item. You move on. Exactly. You move on. And, uh, you know, that's something I definitely want to work on is just, you know, if I don't think it's going to sell really quickly, if it's not a long tail item, like I know you, you, you know, focus on, but if it's something that I want to flip really quickly, I can't get down if it doesn't flip in two days. They ask, forget it. I'm just going to let it sit there. I have to just keep getting that pile done or I shouldn't have bought it. That's another, you know, if I, if I bought, I bought it to sell it. I didn't buy it to, you know, hang clothes on. I, I bought it to sell it. Oh, <laughs> I think we've all have something. I think everyone out yeah. there has something that just sits on the wall for no other reason right. and you don't know where else to put it. Right. Yeah. Annie? Um, I think my two biggest problems are <laughs> one is having, um, well, this, okay, this is a more pedantic one. A more pedestrian one. Um, just having not enough high-priced items. Um, I tend to be uh, lured by the, oh, if I sell a hundred of these, even at ten dollars, it's going to be a thousand dollars promise. Where as it would be, you know, a tenth as much work if I have found things that cost that would sell for <laughs> ten times as much. Um, and I'm working on that. It's a little. Um, you know, I've been really limited in my sourcing <clears throat> um, the past couple of years, but 
I, you know, I got enough stuff <laughs> to list and I do occasionally do some buying. Um, but yeah, I have to think of things that are some things that will sell faster. I don't have enough of those and some things that will sell for more. Um, those are my two weak spots and in, in my inventory, I think. Um, and then like in a more philosophical <laughs> sense, I think just having too many ideas and not uh, enough time in you know the world to do them all and getting too attached to them um you know i i sell on a lot of platforms i i want i want to do a lot of things and at the same time and this kind of goes back to the last the last topic but i actually don't want to work every single hour of every single day you don't um, i mean in a theoretical sense yeah <laughs> At the moment, I, I kind of, it is kind of my entertainment, but, you know, it's, it's more about quality of life and, and uh, I don't know, I'm not trying to uh, make a bazillion dollars and be a, a, like, you know, if I wanted to do that, I would have stayed in, you know, uh, some venture funded startup and bought a lot you know got a lot of equity and slept under my desk and had like 10 ulcers and that's not really my goal so you know it's more about having fun and being my own boss and you know having enough not you know to overload <laughs> so I, I fully fully for us it's freedom i i, I could yeah. make more money doing something else at least for for part of this if i wanted to go back to corporate america and all that that bs but you got to think of time quality of life and everything else i could have employees run some of the stuff but annie's totally true on that the only thing i would say too is again everybody's business is based on we're going to pop back to david just like it's based on what you can get I, I wished I could get exactly what Annie's saying. I wish I could get the high dollar items all the time. Unfortunately, around here, they're like sharks everywhere, you know? So I found niches that I I have to list more items. It's just what works for me. Not There's no, again, no right or wrong answers for anybody's life as a reseller. It's what, what you can find that works for you best. I'm fully on Annie's pathway with that. I would rather be able to list those, but I can't find, you know, I'm lucky to find a couple thousand dollar item here or there. You know, it's, it's not a constant occurrence. And I've got pickers and it's not easy even doing that. But we'll yeah, pop over and, to. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, I used to do things like clothes and cosmetics. And so like I experimented with a lot of things and like the cosmetics, I was just looking back at the numbers and like they did really well and sold really fast. And I'm like, should I go back to that? But it's, it's not me. And I, I don't know. I did okay with clothing. I we made a pretty good living with clothing, but I hated it. I hated it. It wasn't fun. It lost the appeal of being a reseller if I had to do clothing all the time. Yeah. That's kind of like what you would say. I would guess. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I get you. I get you, Dave. Well, first, Don, I don't think you ramble hardly at all. I've got a, I we have a segment a on our show called the Rambling. Yeah, I heard that week, last so. night. I, I heard that last night. <laughs> um. I think that my biggest weakness has to do with scheduling and which is actually very, very funny because I'm extremely punctual and I am right on time for everything and I schedule my life right down, but that's with the day job. And because uh, the reselling is a second job, it doesn't have to get done as much as the day job has to get done. So if all of a sudden I got to take the car in, well, I'm not listening tonight because I got to take the car in after work, or if I'm not doing this, this has to happen. It takes the place of uh, the reselling. Um, and I do realize just because I watch from time to time, the weekend just kind of disappear a little bit. And I say, geez, you know, especially like take, take the upcoming weekend. It's a three day weekend for me because I do have uh, the holiday off. Theoretically, I should be listing three times as much stuff or, you know, or more stuff than I do on a regular weekend. Somehow I know that I won't. Now that's also <laughs> because I'm, I'm going out and I have a picker I'm meeting with and all that kind of thing. And you kind of bundle everything together on the weekends that you have to do. But I absolutely do have to set myself up a routine and a schedule after I uh, quit the day job. And I, and I absolutely know that because otherwise there's always another day to list. There's always another day to do that. And, and you, you got to get out of that mindset. I got you on that one. I, I try to schedule everything and it, something always changes. That's why people ask me, can we do this? Can we do that? I never know usually with... I can't schedule out more than, say, two or three weeks around my life, honestly. I don't know about everybody else, but that's me. 
Now we got Jeff. Let what's what's what's. Uh, my biggest thing is I, I need to stop chasing the squirrels. <laughs> like <laughs> literally squirrels. <laughs> well, sometimes maybe I don't on the greenhouse, but uh, the. The, putting out the fires, the little things, and not staying focused on the one thing, not uh, you know blocking stuff off and saying no, I, I I'm not going to pay attention to that right now. I'm doing this this one thing, and, and that that's a big thing for me because it, any little problem that comes up, I stop whatever I'm doing, it, whether it's reselling or with the the business, I stop and I go take care of that real fast, and, and that breaks my momentum up. And that, delegation that, of time yeah yeah the allocation of time and, and that's that's a that's a big thing for me so. well, i brought up the time question earlier for that exact exact reason there um i'll say this but i i've tracked our time i know how many hours i spend i know how many minutes i waste on stupid things and i, I don't try to waste them anymore and that, that's everybody here puts in a lot of hours whether they're doing it in two different jobs or what the case may be everybody puts in a lot of hours I would really hope that dispels dispels the whole thing that this is going to be some simpleton thing. I was watching um, um, what's his name, uh, Mr. Wonderful. I can't think of his real name now. Kevin O'Leary, and um, I don't promote people. I'm not trying to promote him, but he's more straightforward and just says it like it is, in my opinion. But you will spend more time doing this than if you work for somebody else. Everybody I know probably spends more oh, time yeah. doing this. I don't care what position you were in. I was I was a salaried position as a regional. I had an eleven point two million dollar region that I was responsible for, and I, by far, even with thirty some odd stores or more, I still spend more time doing this. It's by choice. Again, it's my my choice. I don't have to do it. I could stop any day I wanted if I need to. But anyway, we're getting close to the end, and I actually got one more round of questions here. And then we're gonna we're gonna probably tail it end off on, on that. But this one is more on longevity. Uh, this is my personal. This is the what I want to do for the rest of my life. This is this is it. This is this is me. This feel, feels like me. It feels like I've totally was in some other world where I shouldn't have been. All these other years working for somebody else. This is me. So my goal is to do this in five years, ten years, till I'm unable to do this anymore. That's that's what's gonna pull me away from this. Um, and I think we are actually back to Marty is the first shot this time, I think. So we're going to go around this round here and end it off at Travis. And we'll probably do just like a final thoughts as well. But Marty, where do you want to be? It could be two things. It doesn't have to be reselling, so to speak. It, wh wherever you feel, what are you working towards now and what your your, your daily doings are? Where, where do you want to be in, in a five-year time span? Oh, my God. In a five-year time saying i want to make five times more money <laughs> than i am now i mean that's a, that's a a lofty goal but um never exactly know. Like, i know no exactly and hard work you know is all it takes but um i i definitely want to do this the rest of my life like you um the music thing i do which is something i love i know it has a certain shelf life because your body breaks down over time unfortunately um i'm in my mid 50s already so if i could do it another 15 years or so i'd be happy i'd sign for that right now but this is the kind of thing that I can do, God willing, you know, every day of my life. Uh, so this is what I, my goal is to just constantly build and improve upon this business and have it as something. Hopefully I could pass down to my children one day. Very good. Very good. Yes. Annie? Um, well, from a practical standpoint, I do. I, I need to make more money. I'm not not uh, where I want to be in terms of finances, but it's, that is not really viscerally interesting to me. Um, I don't have a lot of like, uh, of that circuitry of like, of, of feeling rewarded by making money. It doesn't really do much for me, but I do, I do need to do that. Um, but I'm more, I mean, I do a lot of art stuff on the side and I'd like to, you know, do more of that. And I also, um, I just moved to Salem from, from Boston um, like about eight months ago mm -hmm. and there's an amazing art community here and a lot of, um, a lot of subculture, a lot of like witches as you might imagine, <laughs> like literally and um, a lot of music, a lot of art, a lot of really cool stuff, people doing cool stuff. And I just, I want to get involved in that. I want to be able to sell my stuff at all the bazillion um, uh, like art fair, art fairs and events there are around Halloween time. 
And uh, my Shopify store is kind of uh, geared towards that end of it. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to build that more and uh, just integrate more with my new, my new hometown and be able to do more art and share it with more people and add more good to the world instead of junk. I loved Salem when we were there. My wife would love to go back up there any day of the week. It was a very enjoyable experience. Yeah. Very, very. We stayed in the House of Seven Gables. It was just awesome. It was just a all the way around enjoyable experience while watching the whole works. It's, there's a lot to do up there. Annie is fully, fully right. Let, let's hop over to Dave now. Well, for the next uh, two years, two months, four days, but who's counting? <laughs> oh I'm in a oh holding God. pattern because that's when I can retire. So um, absolutely no, that's what I'll be doing for that period of time. Uh, day I, first day I can get out of the state, I'm planning on getting out of the state, and then I'll be doing the uh, reselling full-time. I, I may take a weekend off, but then I'll be doing re, uh, reselling full-time after that. Um, I'm actually looking even further down the road, and that's where I'm, I'm hoping to groom a random neighborhood kid to be able to buy the business. Well, watch how you say that. That one sounded. <laughs> <laughs> um, have him buy the business from me, of course. I'm not going to give it to him. You can buy it. <laughs> it's a money making business. And then uh, ride off into the uh, sunset and find, find a nice place just to retire and lay on the beach all day. Pedal in your million dollars from your sale. There you right? go. <laughs> Jeff? Uh, my, our five-year plan is, is I'll be about the same place that I am right now, uh, with the flower shop and greenhouse and then reselling, mm. hopefully building the reselling up more. Uh, but my 10-year plan is to, uh, just strictly be reselling. And that's, that's my goal. Good, good goal. Goal. I, I would never give up a family business that you own already. That would be ridiculous. If we've got some businesses, and at the end of the day, the kids will probably get a couple of them and the smaller well, ones and stuff. So, that's you know, with ours. I perfectly understand that. I would pass it along anything I could as well, and I would keep it running full fledged just like any other day as well, too. So, I am 100% with you as well, well with that one. Now, we got Travis last. You got to listen to everybody else now. <laughs> You, yeah. Again, if, if I don't want to put you in any kind of spot with your job, so you, whatever <laughs> it may be, Jeff's going to keep with his stream. Everything is perfectly welcome. So, you know, don't feel obligated one way or the other. So, um, yeah, I still, I still probably have another, I have a good, I have a good stretch with my job still to go. Um, this currently is, is a hobby that turned into something that, that makes some extra money that gives us some flexibility and, 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 and fun. I still see this being that case in, in five years. Um, the best thing I like about this hobby is the psychological aspects of it because it ties in with my other hobby of just being totally into psychology. So that, mm -hmm. that crossroads uh, that those two hobbies bring me, just keep me really happy and enjoying this. So if five years from now, I'm still doing the same thing. Uh, I'll be pretty content um, if, if I could change or, or work toward anything would just continue to streamline, you know, the kind of things that I that I offer and pie in the sky I would I would love to learn about art and and be able to 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 do some high priced art type stuff um, in some kind of form. Yeah, very, very good. Very good. Very good on that one, too. You worded it very, very, very nicely, I'll say. Um, we're about about to the uh, bottom line here. I think Travis, Marty, Annie, Dave, Jeff, everybody has offered a different view, a different at least vision of, of where they're at, what they're doing, basically the same, same aspect. So everybody has a different take on it. There's some things that are always going to be universal no matter what. And if, if you've paid any attention to the conversation here, efficiency pretty much ties to everybody's options here. Again, it comes down to your skill set, which everybody gets better doing as well, too. So don't compare yourself to somebody else. Everybody here has a different life, a different story, a, a different aspect on what they get out of reselling. The, the bottom line is everybody here likes reselling. Everybody does enjoy it. Doesn't mean you, you can't love something else you do, too. But again, this is a very enjoyable Start as a hobby, like like with Travis. We were just doing it for side money 20 some odd years ago. I just threw a um, an eight millimeter Star Wars 15 minute film was the first thing I ever sold on eBay years and years and years ago. And it was just some, well, let's see what happens. And that's, it's led me here. 
So you never know what's going to that's going to come with your life. You never know where where anything is going to take you in this. And, and don't again, the comparing to somebody else. Don't ever do that. You are all different. Everybody's unique. Everybody has a different take on everything. And there is no right or wrong answer. Everybody's play on this. It works for them. And that's the biggest factor here. I'm not going to tell you don't do this or don't do that because things that I don't that I, I can't do may work perfectly fine for somebody else. I, I'm going to leave it at that. We're going to start with Travis. Well, actually, I think it would be Annie was the next one. We're going to say say a, a, a goodbye. We're not going to put Travis back on the spot two times in a row here. We're going to let Annie just give a, a passing thought or a goodbye, whatever she'd like to do. Annie has a channel. Dave has a channel. Marty has a channel as well. So check them out. I've got links to them as well. Annie has a lot of videos. Obviously, Dave does. Marty needs to get some more videos up. Other, I, I've watched some of his other stuff too. So Marty, Marty's actually a good singer. He's got a Michael Nesmith. Uh, um, um, <laughs> like, what would you call it? Um, how sort of a I, tribute. A it was tribute. like a tribute. It's part of the moment tribute when he passed away. Yeah, I felt bad. And I, I watched. Thank the, you for Marty. that. It was very good. It was. Uh, I was really it was really good. I a lot. He shared it. It was a really nice one. But anyway, I'll let Annie start it off here. So if you guys, you can call it your store, whatever you'd like to do on it. Say, say goodbye, say some passing thoughts. <laughs> um, well, if if anyone wants to subscribe to my channel, um, it's uh, Annie eBay School <laughs> uh, on YouTube. I got a link for everybody's down too. Um, and if you need help, sorry, I have a cat problem. Oh, we had um, one just like that. <laughs> um if you have anything that you think I'd be qualified to help you with, I'd be happy to help you. So just, you know, feel free to make comments or get in touch with me. If you think I know anything that you want to know, I don't know if I do. She knows um, a lot. I've, I've watched many of her videos. So. <laughs> and um, yeah, if you have a particular, you know, Victorian decade you want me to talk about, I, I'm all over it. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah. Thank you for watching, everyone, and thanks to Don. And I'll pass it to the next person. Later. Dave. <laughs> uh, first, want to thank you, Don, for doing this. Uh, glad to be part of it, certainly. Glad um, to have everybody, of course. First item I sold on was a Shaquille O'Neal basketball card. I do remember that. You you bringing up what you sold first. I brought up the first thing that I sold of my own. Um, Hopefully everybody did enjoy uh, my appearance and can check out the Million Dollar Peddlers. Uh, we do have a live show every uh, Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern. And uh, do check out the video that uh, I put up today. It's kind of, I'm calling it the anti-bolo. And what I did is I went through about seven items that I sold and I told you why they took so long to sell. I mean, Don always talks about long tail and I'm rambling, Don, I know. Are you looking no, at no, 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 not at all. Um, <laughs> Talk about long tail. Um, a couple of the items that I sold were from 2011. So it took 11 years to sell. Well, I go into why it took 11 years to sell, what I did wrong in the listing, uh, why I wouldn't list it again, or if I did list it again, how I would change the listing. I think it's kind of an interesting kind of twist on the bolo. So, so do check that out if you could. Jeff? Well, thanks for all that. letting us be here. I had a great time. This is, this is fun. Um, <laughs> My biggest thing is don't don't get frustrated and don't give up on it. Stay with it. That's there's low times and high times. If you can keep going through the low times, uh, I love doing it. It's a good thing. And uh, if you would buy more flowers, <laughs> <laughs> I can get a link down there if you want, Jeff. No, nah, we're busy enough as it is. Oh, geez, that's always good though. That's always <laughs> yeah. good. Travis. I'm, I'm glad people are buying flowers, Jeff. Um, my wife's watching right now, so I'm <laughs> Ooh, Sam, unfortunately not been one of them, so I better get on that. Um, yeah, hey, uh, Billion Dollar Peddlers, that sounds like a really, uh, the anti-bolo. I'm going to check that out. That sounds like a really cool, little cool uh, idea for a video, Thank so you. good one. Um, I just have an eBay store. Uh, it's uh, www.bio-digitaljazz.com. It'll redirect you there. Um, I don't have a YouTube channel, but if you were going to subscribe to me, I say take your subscription and, and put it on put it on these other folk because they, they've got really good content and they're really good people. Thank you. Links are down for everybody, too. I've got links for everybody who's got one. Uh, Marty? million thanks to you, Don. Um, your 
rise in YouTube has been amazing. I think I started watching you in 18, which is probably when you started, right? 17, 18. This on is YouTube, going on my fourth year, I don't, I couldn't even tell. Yeah, probably something like that. Yeah, but it ties directly to when I started full time. So it's been amazing to watch you and and you know the the generosity you've exhibited to everyone. I, mean, I really mean this. It's been incredibly motivational for for me and for thousands of other people. So thank you for that. Thank you for having me. We do have a YouTube channel, and yes, I need to do a lot more videos. I know, I know. So uh, <laughs> it's uh, Jiminy Flip It is the name of my channel, a play on Jiminy Cricket, of course. My wife and I are huge Disney fans, so it was kind of a play couldn't on that. that. Yeah, I couldn't tell. And my Disney, uh, my Disney, my eBay store is Disney Family 515. I just wanted a different name, and I'm glad I went with the Jiminy Flip It. It seems to be uh, people like it. Um, so I really appreciate it. Please, if you have any ideas for videos, I also, Dave, I watched the, uh, the Million Dollar the peddler i watched that video today fantastic and and really unique which is hard to find the thing with these videos i'm finding is like there's just certain you know here i am going out to a yard sale here i am here's what's sold it's like the same couple of things and i think trying to find something unique to do is really difficult and key and that's what i want to try to do and i thought that was brilliant today with the million dollar peddlers really thought it was good so anyway uh thanks again don it's been a pleasure hope we well, can do it again uh, it sounds like everybody's pretty much enjoyed it. So I would probably yeah. say we will. I want to thank everybody, Travis, Marty, Annie, Dave, and Jeff for coming on tonight. Um, again, they're just giving you straight out answers. We didn't script or, or pre-set up anything to make it steer to any direction. I hear that a lot, or I see videos where everything is already pre-done. They already know what the answer is going to be. And I, I'm not like that. This is the real world. We're all talking from, I think, where we really feel everything is at and, and how we do our own business. So one thing, I'll say this again, I say it all the time, don't ever compare yourself to somebody else. It's what you get out of this. And for me, it's not money. For a lot of us, it's not money. It's an enjoyable, it's it's almost a relaxation for me. Even though I do a lot of hours, people say you're going to kill yourself, you're doing too many hours. It doesn't feel like I'm doing that many hours. It, it doesn't, it, it's, it's, it's too enjoyable for the most part, 99% of the time, to say that. And, and like with Jeff sweating the small things, I try not to do that. I, I that's one of my, my things that sometimes I, I, I let it bother me for longer than it should. And I try to end it at the end of the day. And I, I just wished I just would leave it alone and not even touch some issues, but judge it by your own standards. Don't compare yourself. I, I just wished everybody would stop comparing themselves when somebody posts a video of this or shows you that, or shows you this. I post stuff. I know I, I try to give you an information to to like dave or or annie or, or marty here it's it's information that's all i really care about i'm i'm an information oriented person travis is definitely the same way as is jeff here you got to know something you got to put some time some effort into it so i honestly hope that this gave you an idea this is literally what basically a brainstorming would be other than we'd be all sitting at one table everybody be taking notes and you'd be writing down what you thought was helpful to you based on what other people said that's a brainstorming session everybody bounces ideas off you corporate world it was it happens in restaurants and retail establishments everywhere i've pretty much been there has been brainstorming sessions maybe they don't call it that but round table is a brainstorming session and that's what we have today if, if we get a lot of comments a lot of folks can leave some comments in the, the down below a lot of thumbs up here we'll probably run off and do another one of these uh, i'll bring maybe some folks back we'll bring some new folks in too so we can get a broad range uh, of discussion so you're not just hearing it from person who's full-time or who, who does this or does that it, it's all different everybody sells different things it's a it's a different experience for everybody there is no shortcut i guess i would say so we're going to end it off on there and i do sincerely thank everybody for coming on I know I'm terrible on trying to get everybody to do this, but if you didn't hit the thumbs up button, please hit the thumbs up button. We'll fix the error so next time you won't hear the echoes, you won't hear. Hopefully I won't disappear for 10 minutes while the I get kicked offline, but I will let you all go. I thank you all for coming on, and I, I honestly and sincerely thank the five guests for tonight for spending their evening with us. They could have done it anywhere, but I do appreciate them helping and showing everybody else some other ideas and some other thoughts on it. So we'll let it go with that.